Hello crafty friends, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a card for you using some of the Be Bold Simon Says Stamp release products as well as some older products from Simon Says Stamp and lots and lots of ink colors. So those first two ones were the Simon Says Stamp Be Bold release with Dreamy Leaves and Cherry Blossom Embossing Folder. And then we had some Simon Says Stamp cardstock and inks. So this is the World Eye that was with the Splendor release. And then these Cherry Blossom flowers from the embossing folders. I love these embossing folders that include die cuts. It just allows you to take these up one extra level. Now this cherry blossom embossing folder has the ability to emboss these little flowers and you can do quite a few at a time. And what's nice is you turn your embossing folder over to the deboss side and you can go ahead and kind of wiggle these die cuts into the full outlined florals. You, some of them you have to make sure that you're getting the full outline. There are a couple that have a leaf tucked underneath another one. So you wanna be sure that you can see the whole outline of the flower when you're doing this. Now I did decide not to tape these down, but moving forward, I will. I hesitate, I think about it and I think, no, nah, I'm gonna be able to keep them all together. So I did end up um, embossing a few of them uh, a little off kilter, but uh, next time I will tape them down to ensure that they don't move. So if I do quick count here, it looks like we get about 14 flowers embossed at once. Now I did lose a few, like I said, so I didn't quite get that many, but it ends up working out in the end. So I went ahead and embossed these with my Spellbinder Platinum machine. And here you can see up close these lovely little florals that you get. I do recommend that you cut these out before embossing because if you emboss the panel and then put your die cuts on top, you're gonna lose a lot of that depth that you get with the embossing and the puffiness, I guess. I, I can't think of another word, but they'll they'll be flat. While you'll still see some detail, it's gonna get lost when you run it through trying to die cut it after embossing it. So this is the other product that was released with Be Bold. These are the Dreamy Leaves, and I am officially obsessed with this stamp set. I have a bunch of cards coming. I had one come out yesterday that features these leaves, and they are so much fun. I highly recommend that you go and either check out the Simon Says Stamp website underneath the product when you click on the product link. It does have all the different inspiration from the designers, as well as if you go to Simon Says Stamps blog, there's a gallery that has a ton of inspiration as well. And you can also upload your own projects to that website to ensure that not only are the designers getting traction, but your photos could get traction. So I went ahead and used some clear embossing ink, and then I'm coating it in this WOW green embossing folder that I've had in my stash for quite some time. And then we're gonna go ahead and re-stamp just so I can get some extra leaves. But I noticed that one of those leaves are not going to fit. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove that and then carry on without it. I have enough leaves on this paper that I will not miss having that one not in the set. But this does give me a few extra in case I want to layer some more up. If you do not have green embossing powder in your stock, you could definitely use clear that would give a very similar effect to what this green does. I chose this green just because it has a slight metallic shimmery finish when it's embossed. So I like to clean my stamps up after every use just to ensure that they're ready for the next time that I decide to play. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the area, heat set those leaves off camera, and get started on creating the background panel. Now, a tidbit about this background panel once it comes up here. I pulled a very old stamp set out of my cupboard. Uh, I knew I had a background stamp there and I wanted to have kind of like a distressed look to it. So I pulled this out. This is an old, old stamp set. So I'm gonna link below some suggestions on what could be used in addition to this one since I'm sure this one is no longer available. And I'll link them below, as well as I have a links for all of the inks that I'm using and all of the products uh, located below at Simon Says Stamp. 
These are affiliate links. So what that means is that if you shop with me by clicking on one of those links, I do earn a small commission off of your shop order, but it does not get charged back to you. It's merely just a small commission that comes to me. So I appreciate anybody who does use my links below. I know I've had a couple of you and I do appreciate it so much. It does allow me to keep products fresh and new to create these videos. For this background stamp, we did a tone on tone, and this is Simon Says Stamp cardstock as well as Simon Says Stamp ink. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut these leaves out. There are dies for these leaves, but I was not sent dies for this specific product. I went ahead and slowed this video down, this portion of the video down to normal speed so you can see how I cut fussy cut in real time. I don't mind fussy cutting. I do know there are some that don't and it is difficult for others, but fussy cutting for me is still an option and still something I enjoy. So this is me fussy cutting in real time. I'm gonna do one more leave, I believe, and then we're gonna snap our fingers and all of the fussy cutting will be done. Notice that metallic sheen that we're seeing on the embossing powder. That's why I use this specific color. I love the addition of that like metallic look that it's giving. You could definitely have just used clear and that would have given you a very similar result. We're gonna hit, go ahead and finish up and just going to snap and be done. So now we're going to get into the ink blending. I did a lot of ink blending for this, but we're going to get started with the Simon Says Stamp Light Pink card stock. I believe this is cotton candy. And we're adding peachy and peony. The vision I had was plumeria flowers. So that's kind of what I was going for when I got started. The nice thing about using a colored card base is that does just act as an additional color. I know it looks like I covered all of it, but I promise that it's giving you a little bit of additional color in this flower. If I had used white, then the white would have probably poked through a little bit more on the whirl part of this flower. So that's another reason why I used color cardstock because I didn't want that bright white in the whirl parts because they are not all together. You can kind of break them apart. And so I worried that you would see the white paper but you could get a very similar result if you're using white paper. I had the white paper in the beginning thinking that's what I was gonna use for this and then did a pivot mid video, which I do that quite a bit. So for these little pink flowers, I'm kind of doing the opposite. We're gonna go ahead and turn them all this peachy pink color by using peachy and then focus the pink or the peony in the middle of the florals. I've pulled out the small round brush from the Simon Says Stamp line to ensure that I'm only hitting the middle and I'm making sure that I'm not laying the ink down too dark, just hitting the embossed high sections. Now for this one, I went ahead and cleaned up this die cut. It had a little bit of extra paper left over from where it didn't fully die cut. But for this one, we're gonna use peony and taffy. So I'm focusing that peony in the middle and then we're gonna use that darker color taffy on the outside. Again, this having this base of colored cardstock is just adding to the co overall color of the floral that you get with adding the ink on top. Absolutely love the way that color turned out. I could definitely see myself using those colors in the future with a navy background or black and gold, that would be really pretty. So I foresee the whirl flowers being in a, in a future video or at least an Instagram post. Went ahead and colored the little flowers in similar colors. And that finishes up the florals for the card. Now we're gonna move into the leaves, which I fell in love with the color combo of these leaves. I'm using Kale, Perfection, and Raindrop. And this is also a green-based cardstock from Simon Says Stamp as well. So I'm gonna start with the Perfection and we're gonna use it as an ombre. So I'm gonna use the colored cardstock as the first colored layer. So I'm taking that Perfection about three quarters up the way of the leaf. And then now I'm going in with Kale, kind of going up halfway up the leaf to create that ombre look. And then we're gonna do raindrop about just the quarter, the base of the cardstock. 
I love the effect of adding just a little bit of ink to these die cuts makes them look so much more realistic. It's such an easy addition to take a flat image and make it pop. So I absolutely love adding ink to these. So we're just going to finish here with these remaining leaves. I'm going to have way more supplies than I need, but it's always good to have extra than to not have enough and have to stop mid project and go create more because you didn't create enough to begin with. So I highly recommend always making extra. I keep them all in their little pouches with the die cuts so that when I play with that die cut again, sometimes I'll just use one of these little leaves or one of these little projects that I've already created on a new card. It's a simple, easy way to be inspired. The sentiment on this card I wanted to keep very simple. So I'm using one of the sentiment strips from Simon's Stamp. This is the Bestie pack. And I wanted to use these because I wanted, like I said, to keep it simple. I thought a die cut sentiment might take away from all of these die cut flowers. So these reverse sentiment strips and sentiment strips are great to use just to create a very subtle, easy sentiment that won't distract from the rest of the background or of all these die cuts that I've created. So because I cut all of my own card bases, sometimes I'm not as accurate as maybe a commercial cutter would be. And so you just saw me there trying to decide if I was going to create a border. I decided not to. But then my card base was uh, a tad too large for this card panel. And so I went ahead and trimmed it down. And we're adding the tape runner to the back of the panel to adhere it down to the guard base. And now it's time for my favorite part, the fiddling of the die cuts. I am a fiddler when it comes to putting my cards together. I spend a lot of time arranging and rearranging and deciding where I'm going to put things, especially embellishments when I'm doing more of simple cards. But for this card, with all of these die cuts, I'm definitely taking my time trying to decide where I'm going to put all of these lovely die cuts that we've ink blended and cut out and just waiting until I have this feeling. I've called it my feng shui, my craft feng shui, where I just it becomes appealing to me. And so I just know that we're done. It looks great. It's appealing. I know that it's time to move on. So to ensure that I keep those die cuts exactly where I laid them out, I went ahead and used a little bit of the low tack tape and just taped them together so that I can pick them up and move them around. Now, before I get too crazy with these leaves, I'm throwing down a little bit of craft tacky glue to get them adhered. I'm going to add some more later, but for now, I just want to get them kind of on there so that I don't lose my placement of my leaves. With laying these leaves down flat, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the florals, at least these three here in the middle. So I'm using Simon's Stamp Foam Squares. These are the ones that have the thicker loft, and I'm just putting a few in the middle, and I'm actually doubling up the light pink ones to give just a little bit of different elevation. Um, I'm do going very sparsely with the foam squares because I know I'm going to be tucking things inside or underneath the leaves to um, ensure that we're getting that lovely floral arrangement. Now, I'm having a little bit of a struggle. I didn't put enough glue down, so adding a little bit more. And I'm not being careful because we're going to probably end up covering them. And now we're just going to go ahead and lay these down. Now, remember, I did pop up those two light pink ones with double foam squares. So this card's probably going to need additional postage. Sometimes my cards squeak through. But when I know I have this much extra and the loft of these foam squares, I'll put the additional hand canceled cost here in the U.S. for these cards to ensure that they mail appropriately. I do not live relatively close to a post office, so I just use the stamps that I feel are necessary to get the card where it needs to go. So I went ahead and I kind of bent the leaves up on these little cherry blossom die cuts just to give them a little bit more playfulness. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm trying to decide what type of glue to use. 
My craft tacky glue, I think, is getting a little thick. It's been in my drawer for a hot minute, but I ran out of other liquid glue that I like to use. So I'm trying to get it used up before I purchase an additional one, but it's struggling a little bit. So I think I end up switching here to the Barely Art Glue, which I, I like all adhesives. I can't say that I like one more than the other. I think it's more the the tip on it that becomes more convenient for certain things. Although the Simon Says Stamp Craft Tacky Glue is really thick. And in a previous video, using the thicker glue helped keep some of my matte cardstock glued together better than the more runnier liquid glue. So here we are just fiddling again. I'm bouncing between liquid glue and foam squares. I don't know that I've used any foam squares yet, but I think I end up popping up some of these just to give some additional playfulness. And I love that Simon Says Stamp has the larger squares and then the smaller ones. They're great too if you need an additional smaller size to cut and they cut beautifully, especially when you cut them with the positively everyday scissors or the fine detail scissors. Though I have yet to find an adhesive that sticks to those. So those scissors are amazing. Here we are just popping one of the florals up and I'm just adding them. Like I said, I don't have a necessary recipe for how I do things. It's more just appealing. And when I can, I try to work in odd numbers because odd numbers tend to be more appealing to the eye. So now I'm looking at the sentiment and I don't like how stark white it is. So a great way to remove that brightness is to color blend over top. So I grabbed Ocean. That's the color we used on the blue cardstock on the base. And I'm just going ahead and doing a quick ink blend over top that tones those sentiments down and make them more relevant to this card, makes them blend in a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and do the thanks friend. I appreciate you so much. I have some really great friends in my life and I'm so thankful that they chose me for their friendship. So I'm just getting it lined up, eyeing it. Sometimes it's hard to make sure that you're getting your sentiment strips lined up when you're doing these card videos because you, you it's hard not to put your head in um, and get over top of your card to ensure that it's straight. So sometimes I pick it up and just kind of look at it. This is a, an embellishment mix from Simon Says Stamp called Mist, and this is going to go ahead and finish the card. I appreciate you guys joining with me today. I hope you found this card video enjoyable. I do have affiliate links down below and a list of all the supplies that I used to create this beautiful card today. As of filming this card and posting it, it is day two of Simon Says Stamp's Be Bold blog hop release. So be sure to check out my blog below to find out details on an exclusive offer as well as the giveaway. They give away $25 to one person of every comment section along the blog hop. It's a really great opportunity to win. And I'll be honest, I have won before. It's been a few years, but I have won. But that's the card for today. I just want to say thank you for being here, and I hope you have a great day. Take care. <laughs>